The next goal for the Tibetan Photo Project is the Tibetan Photo Project Filmmakers Education Centers in India. And what we want to do with that is we want to set up hopefully five different centers where we have the computers with the uh, programs on them that can be used to edit films as well as the cameras so that the Tibetans can go in, they can check out a camera, they can go out and shoot their own documentary type films, they can come in, they can learn the process of how to edit the films. We are in contact with a Tibetan over there that is um, very well schooled and educated in filmmaking, so we're hopeful that he will come on board as one of the instructors for this. And ultimately what we would do is we would turn these centers over to the Tibetans. And the reasoning behind this is we realize that though we're doing what we can right now, eventually we need to be able to pass this to someone else. And who we want to pass it back to is the Tibetans and allow them to continue to keep sharing their voice and sharing their story through their own um, photos and documentaries that they're producing and putting out there so that their voice will not be forgotten and that they will be heard. Left in the dust of the human race are tiny remnants of tattered cultures trying desperately to hold on to the keys that unlock the great mysteries of life. Did the American Indians understand things that we'll never know? And what of the Aborigines of Australia? Did one ever find proof of the existence of the human soul while on a walkabout? One of these keys also belongs to the Tibetans. The concept that solutions to the ills of the world lie within the content and quality of each individual's heart is lost on the me generation. Bigger weapons, faster computers and technology are the answers and things have become the gods. More money, more power, more is the new sound of Om, the new Amen, the new Shalom. Free Tibet is a cause that has risen on the world stage to the level of the Nobel Peace Prize for the Dalai Lama in 1989. And for those who know their plight of human annihilation and cultural desecration by the Chinese over the past 50 years, the soul of Tibet is embodied in the Dalai Lama. Every Tibetan seems to contain a portion of that soul. While life holds little mystery, those who've come in personal contact with the Dalai Lama can at least recognize that his gentle presence is powerfully felt like a mystery of life. What is it about the Save Tibet effort that seems to maintain a hold on the one element of human nature that we cannot define in DNA or through technology? Do we recognize that we cannot let another culture be swallowed up or we lose all chance to find and prove that there is something greater within us than cells, than bone and flesh? Why will the concept of saving Tibet not stop nagging at the collective conscience? A Tibetan monk, when asked what he thought was in it for those in the West who were trying to help Tibet, said that there's nothing in it for us except what is right. When asked about becoming a Buddhist, one Lama answered that religion should be a choice that follows one's own tradition. A person should pick a religion that matches their nature because religion is there to make people better. China is rising on the world stage as a military and economic force. China could save Tibet with a slight change in policy, and in doing so, it would rise above all great nations. But their current path is to gut the Tibetan culture while leaving only a corpse dressed up to attract tourist dollars as sort of a Tibetan amusement park. But realistically, there will be no great change coming from China. And that leaves it to us to do whatever we can, large or small, to help the Tibetans save their culture. Individually, we gain nothing from the effort, but in saving Tibet, we prove the existence and power of the human spirit. Visually and respectfully yours, Sazi Varga and Joe Mickey.